morning everybody so everybody seemed to kind of enjoy the last video that i put out where i just kind of left the camera rolling and took you through my day um so i'm gonna keep doing or try to keep doing videos like that i do want to share with you guys some of our recent sold items on ebay because I know that a lot of you watch these videos for those like bolo type items. So I did snapshot 15 items that we've sold on eBay recently. And throughout today's video, I will share those items with you. So you can kind of get an idea of what is currently selling for us. And today is, what's the date today? It is November 7th and it's about, it's almost noon in just outside of Tampa, Florida is where we are. So anyway, that is the plan today. I'll share those items with you take you along for the ride. I do have a quick story that I want to share with you guys. Uh, this morning when I woke up, one of the first things I do when I wake up in the morning is check eBay, check our eBay stores. And on our main account on the hip line store, we had a negative feedback. And I was kind of upset about that because we just got back to the point now with that store where we got back to 100% positive feedback. So when that came in, I was like, oh no, what happened? Um, and when I looked at the feedback, it was a negative and it said, this is a woman's shirt, not a men's. Now, obviously when we list items on eBay, that's one of the first things that we make sure is correct is the gender of the item. So I knew that it was a men's shirt um, and I wanted to fix the issue, but I wasn't really sure if I should like go straight to eBay or if I should reach out to the customer first. So I decided to give the customer the benefit of the doubt and I sent him a message saying, hey, I saw that you left us negative feedback because you thought that the item was a uh, men's and you or you thought that it was a woman's but it is actually men's and also we do put the item measurements in all of our listings not only in the description but we actually have like a little board that we set up where it shows as a picture it shows the items measurements also this was on a 22 dollars item so it wasn't like it was a very expensive item um but anyway i reached out super professionally obviously i was like hey I noticed you left the negative feedback. Um, let us let, give us the opportunity to fix the issue. And then if you wouldn't mind revising the feedback, that would be great. So anyway, the buyer messaged me back and they were pretty much like, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to revise the feedback. Um, I don't really care what you do. Like I offered to refund him and let, let him keep the item. Um, and he was like, no. So at that point I politely said, okay, then we'll just have to take it up with eBay. So I called eBay. And now here's the deal. Here's how eBay handled this situation. I called them, told them about the negative feedback. They looked at it. I told them specifically, like, we are very precise with the measurements we take and we put them in our item description and as a picture in the listing. So I told the eBay agent that they put me on hold and to eBay's credit, they came back in probably two minutes on hold. They came back and they removed the feedback. So that's great. That's a good thing that eBay is protecting their sellers and not just letting buyers leave erroneous negative feedback. So I have to give eBay credit for that. Obviously there's lots of different issues happening with eBay right now, but the way that they handled the situation was absolutely perfect. So props to eBay on that. Um, and now we're back to hundred percent positive feedback on that account. So not mad about that. So even though my day started off slightly negative, um, I was able to turn it around and here we are back to positivity. <laughs> so anyway, I'm in the car now. I got to run to the bank really quick. And then later today, uh, my dad's coming up here at like 1 p.m. I believe. And we're going to go hang out and play some top golf. So yeah, that's how my day looks right now. A few of you guys asked to show how the autopilot works on the Tesla. So I figured I would just show you really quick. Um, you just kind of double tap on this little stalk under here and then it just switches on and when it's blue it's an autopilot so you can see i'm not even touching the wheel and um yeah it's driving itself so it will like curves like this too it will take those see and obviously it keeps behind the cars and stuff it's very good i think it's a i think it's a really good system it takes a little while to get used to like trusting it um but it's been really great so far yeah all right, I just finished up at the bank. I uh, figured we can jump into some of these what solds. What I will do is I'll pop up the item over here somewhere that I'm talking about so you can see exactly like the, the listing that we had when it sold. And we'll just jump into these. 
So the first one is gonna be, now this is interesting because you'll notice like we're still selling clothing and shoes, but this time of the year, we are definitely focused more on hard goods. So you'll start seeing some more like hard goods and electronics that are what's old videos. So like this one, for example, we picked this up at a garage sale. I believe we paid $20 for it and it's an in-sink aerator. It's a garbage disposal that goes under the sink. It was brand new in the box. Um, I think I scanned it right at the garage sale and it popped up and it's selling well. So we listed it for $94.97, free shipping, um, and it ended up selling for full price. So $20 into $95, after fees, $82.65. Shipping on that, I think was like $12, so $70 minus cost of goods. So it's a $50 net profit, pretty good. The next item up, video games sell incredibly well for us. Um, this one sold pretty fast, I believe. It's a Mario Kart game. And when we're buying video games, we do like to look out for those like franchise games, the Mario Karts, the Pokemon, stuff like that. In this case, again, it was a Wii Mario Kart. The game, the case, everything was in there and it sold for $24.97 free shipping. This next item is kind of interesting. Um, this is one that we actually were sitting on for quite a while. And one of the things we do in our eBay stores is if we've been sitting on an item for too long, we'll end that item. So we go into our eBay store and we end the item and then we click on sell similar. So we go into our ended items and we, we sell similar with that same item. So what that does is it pops up now as like a new listing going into, into eBay's searches. And what we found is by doing that, it kind of bumps up our, our place in search. And a lot of the time, if our item has been sitting there for a while, there may be different things that we're doing now. We can go in and change like the title or change the pictures or add item specific stuff like that so in this case that's exactly what happened this item had been sitting for a long time allison went into our store ended it and then did sell similar and then it sold the same day that she ended up uh, relisting the item and all it is is a vintage cycling jersey it had some nice like color blocking going on on it um, but it sold for $30 with free shipping. And again, that would have been one that we picked up from a thrift store, probably for around $2.50. So if you have older items that are stale, not moving very fast, that might be something you wanna consider. Go into your store, and them and then sell similar. The next item up, this is a pair of Abilene vintage boots. Uh, this was left over from, I don't know if you guys remember, but we bought like a whole bunch of Western stuff back in the day. Uh, we bought out like a, almost an entire store of Western stuff and this was left over from that. So vintage boots, they were brand new. They sold for $74.97 plus $10 shipping. So $85.97 is what they sold for. And then the last item I'll show you for right now, um, this was a decent sale. It was just like a leather Pittsburgh Steelers embroidered jacket. So jackets are selling very well for us right now, which makes sense because it's getting cold in some places, not here. Right now it's 89 degrees out in Florida. <laughs> but we were happy with this sale. It sold for $85 with free shipping. And I believe we got that jacket. We either got it at a thrift store or it came in like a large lot of stuff that we purchased. So, but either way, I wanna say less than $10 is what we paid for it. So happy with that sale. Uh, I'll hit you guys with some more. I think we just did five, right? So 10 more throughout this video. Um, I'm gonna head home and see what uh, what needs to be done before my dad gets here in like an hour. Oh, one other thing that I might as well do while I'm here is go to the UPS store. And I believe there is a eBay return that I need to pick up and look at really quick. So we use this UPS store as our return address for eBay because we don't, one, we're not always at our warehouse, so we don't want to go in there. And then two, we don't really want to use like a public address or um, like our home address. So we have this address that we pay for. I think it's like a couple hundred bucks a year um, for the post mailbox. And all of our returns just come to this store and we pick them up when we need to. Okay, so one thing that you always wanna do when getting a return back on eBay is make sure that the item is in the same condition as it was received. So, and we actually put that in our listings that in the case of a return, the item has to be returned in the same condition. So this is a pair of boots and they were very expensive. Um, they sold for $150 and they were brand new. So I'm gonna open this package up and make sure that they are in the same condition. Um, that way, if there is an issue, we can go to eBay to solve it. Okay, so it looks like tags are still on, which is good. Bottom of this one looks fine. Okay, all right, so no problem with that. 
In this case, we will refund the buyer in full and then just relist these items. And that's part of business, guys. You know, we, we offer, I'm not sure if this was buyer paid returns or not. Usually we offer free returns on everything. So it's just part of what it is. You know, we, we paid shipping to get them out there, probably 12 to $15. And we are now paying shipping to get it back to us. But that's cost of doing business. We work that into the rest of our business model. And for us, having free returns on has increased our sales enough to still continue to warrant doing that. Doesn't mean that it's right for everybody. Um, I still think that if you're going to do free returns, I would say do it on like your first class items. And then the more expensive items that cost more to ship, maybe just do buyer paid returns. But in this case, we're not losing money. Um, I think we paid like $15 for these boots at a thrift store. They sold for 150 so even after we get them back, pay for the shipping, uh, and then relist them, when they sell again, we're still going to be in profit. So again, cost of doing business, happy to deal with it. And then just so you guys can see, because I want to be fully transparent with everything that we're doing, this is the actual listing. I'm going to issue the refund right now. So you can see, refund the buyer, total refund $150 next refund now there you go so the return is closed and now we can go ahead and relist the boots the other thing here is i want to show you the way that our account is set up because we have the restock option on or the out of stock option on on our store i can just this is still an active listing so even though it's sold it remains active in our store with zero quantity so i can just go revise item and then you can see the quantity is currently at zero so i just edit that i change the quantity to one and then i just click revise it and now it's back on the site the cool thing about doing it this way is that if we have watchers on this item, they stay. So we're not like relisting an item with no watchers. If there were people watching this item already, they can now see that it's available again. And the other cool part is we gave that person a deal. Uh, we actually had them listed for 180 plus $10 shipping. So maybe they'll sell for full price now and we'll, we'll still make money. Sit, good girls. Now I can get footage of you. Look, there's my two pretty little puppers. Well, Zero got a haircut, so she's not that pretty right now. Oh, <laughs> good girls. Good girls. And there's my pretty weef. Hey, babe. Don't look at me. What's wrong? I'm ugly right now. Okay. Allie's working on updating the eBay listings. Woo! Woo! <laughs> the, dog's, the dog's like my dad. It's not biting hands. It's not hot. It's not, it's not biting hard. Hi, blog dad. Vlog. Oh, vlog, not a vlog. Vlog. You don't mind if I vlog a little bit, right? No, I don't mind at all. Hey, dad. Hey, son. <laughs> oh, wow. Golf and a, and a ride. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, this is my dad. His name is Steve. Um, I know we've kind of, you've been in a couple of the videos, but we ha you haven't really like been in any of the videos. No. But I've definitely talked about you, and um, a lot of people don't know, but like most of what I know, my knowledge in sales and uh, entrepreneurship comes from my dad. Even like growing up and stuff, he was very supportive with me. Like you know, not wanting to go the traditional route of going to college and getting a degree and blah blah blah, um, and it worked out. So. Well, he can say that, but you can be given what you're given, but you do with it what you do, and you've done sure. a lot with it. So, yeah. you know, we've got four four children, and they're all different. True, very yeah. true. So you've taken initiative to do something spectacular yeah. yeah, with very little. But we've also, in the past, we've worked together in businesses. We've owned, hold on, one, two, three businesses? Yeah. yeah. Three yeah. businesses together. The first successful company that we ever had was a partnership together. Right. Um, so it was fun. It was fun, but my yeah. dad has a lot of insight. I, I wish he lived a bit closer because he lives two hours away. Um, but if he lived a bit closer, we could do some more. I think some more videos together because he has a lot of insight because he's old. <laughs> Relatively old. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but no, he's been around the block in a lot of different like industries, and obviously he's also an entrepreneur. He has his own business and some insight that I think would be beneficial to, sh to show people on the channel too. So maybe at some point we can do some more videos together. I'd like to show help. that my like makeup and <laughs> makeup tutorials. <Yeah. laughs> All right, let's go play some golf. Right. Good shot. Good shot. 
Thanks, Ted. That was good. That was fun. You want these? Oh, yes, thank you. Can Say bye. You, can you Say bye to Dad. Oh, bye bye, oh, puppy. They're tired. Bye bye, puppy. Bye bye. Well, it was really, really awesome getting to spend a little bit of time hanging out with my dad playing some golf together. It was really nice to see him. So thanks again, dad, for coming out here and hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. All right, so for the rest of this video, um, I still said that I would show you guys 15 items that we sold recently. And I think that there's 10 left. So let's jump into those last 10 and we'll end the video with that. So this next item is a vintage Adidas windbreaker. I actually really like this windbreaker. I would have kept it for myself if I didn't already have a lot of vintage windbreakers. And who knows when Florida is gonna cool down enough to use it. So I sold it, sold for $27 free shipping. Next up, another vintage item. This came from, I think this was the last one of um, a bunch of like vintage t-shirts that we found at a garage sale for a dollar each. This is a Looney Tunes on a changes tag and single stitch, really nice item, sold for $34 shipped. Next up, a Polo Ralph Lauren long sleeve shirt. This one was new with tags. I believe that we found this one at the thrift store. And from what I remember, we paid up for it. I think we paid between like seven to $10 for it, but it ended up selling for 40 bucks with free shipping. So even after fees and shipping and a higher cost of goods, we still made a net profit of like 20 bucks on that item. Next up, this is right now, this is probably my favorite dress shirt brand to sell. It sells within like a couple of days of us listing it on eBay. The brand is called Mizzen and Main and the value of them is still pretty high. You just have to take good pictures and describe the item well. Sometimes you'll find these dress shirts and they might have some like small flaws on them. So if that happens, just make sure that you, they'll still sell, uh, just make sure that you fully disclose if there's any flaws on them. This one was really clean. It was a good size, size large, and it was a trim fit one. Good color pattern and everything, and it sold for $48 with free shipping. Next up, this was a garage sale find. Uh, I think I paid, I wanna say I paid $10 for it. It is a Chicago Blackhawks CCM hockey jersey. It had the 2013 Stanley Cup patch on it as well. And this one I took a best offer on and it sold for $50 free shipping. This next item is a vintage Nike windbreaker. I love selling older Nike stuff. It sells really well for us. And the windbreakers right now, as you can see, they're doing very well for us. This one, I think we got on the higher end. I wasn't even really expecting it to sell for this amount of money. Um, it sold for $49.97. And one important thing to point out here is know what you're selling and know what like certain things are called because people search by keywords on eBay. So for example, this one had the pocket on the front of it and that's called an anorak jacket. So we made sure to put that in the title so that if people search for that, it'll pop up. And that's what happened. And this one sold again for almost 50 bucks. Next item up sold through the global shipping program. Um, I was a little bit wary about this one because they're ornaments and they're, they're fragile. So usually we wouldn't ship something like this international, uh, but we did because the offer was good enough. So it was, a, it was a group of Christmas ornaments. We picked them up at a garage sale and it sold for $180 for the entire set plus I believe $12 shipping, so like $192. The buyer through Global Shipping ended up paying additional shipping charges on top of that to get it to them, um, plus import duties as well. So probably another $70 to $100 on top of that purchase price. But we were happy because we got almost $200. And again, this is one of those things where not every collectible is worth money, but sometimes collectibles are worth decent money. So if you find ones that are desirable, like these were Bradford collection and they have that Hummel name attached to them. Um, if you can find collectible items that are still bought, still sought after, not stuff like Beanie Babies or uh, Black Diamond VHS tapes, not stuff like that, but actual, like, actual solid sales on stuff, then it's okay to buy collectibles. Just make sure that you are buying stuff that is still in demand so that you know that there's a market for it. And again, in this case, we found the right buyer through the global shipping program, so that worked well for us, and uh, $192 is what we got for them. Another nice big sale here, this is a pair of Prada shoes. Uh, this came in a wholesale box of shoes like you guys have seen on our channel before. Uh, they ended up selling for $100 even uh, to someone in New York. So a pair of Prada shoes, not even the most desirable pair, not even in the greatest of condition. Like the toe on one of them was a bit scuffed up. 
But even so, still sold for a hundred bucks with, again, free shipping on those. This is another item that was delisted and then relisted because we had it for a while and it ended up selling for $65. This one also went through the global shipping program. It's a pair of Adidas Muay Thai kickboxing shorts. I think we paid like $8 for them. And again, they sold for $65 shipped. And then last but not least for this round of what sold on eBay, you guys know we love to sell vintage t-shirts and sometimes with vintage, it's all about the, the graphics and the category of, of shirts. So in this case, this t-shirt had a bunch of good things going for it. It had that following of being vintage and then it also had the following of Jay and Silent Bob. And people definitely look for stuff like this to add to their collection. So this vintage t-shirt sold for almost $60, sold for $59.97 and it sold fairly quickly and it did even have like some flaws with it, a couple stains here and there. So vintage t-shirts doing really well for us. And that is it guys. Um, I think that, I think I'm gonna end the video here. I'm kind of like sweaty from, <laughs> from playing golf. So I'm gonna go grab a shower, but thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you don't mind me showing you like some of my, my family time and some other stuff that happens in our lives and not just like drilling you with information. Um, hopefully you, you don't mind me including that in these vlogs. We're trying to be more open with everybody and show that we are real people and this is, uh, this is our lives. This is real stuff that we're doing. So hopefully you don't mind that. Please hit the thumbs up button on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you have any questions or comments you wanna let us know. I read every single comment that comes in through our YouTube, so know that your comment will be read. And thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Again, I'm Ryan Roots, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye.